Hey everybody, Adam Savage at Spectral Motion alongside Mark Viniello. How are you, sir? I'm good, Adam. How are you? Very good. Um, I I think I know my animals enough to know that this is not a, a, a this is not a wolf. Tell me what this is. Very good. It's not a wolf. A lot of people look at it and think it's a werewolf. It's actually a dogman. A dog which man. is a cryptid. Okay. So there have been sightings. They do exist, allegedly. Allegedly. And um, we are very excited to work on this new film called Where the Light Ends. It's being produced by Astria Studios. Yeah. And they approached us about doing a whole series of cryptid films. And I, I you know, cryptids, I grew up, you know, Bigfoot, the yeah. original cryptid. Yeah. And so we're very excited to be a part of this and bring these characters to life. And so in the film, there are featured several different cryptids? Yes. Oh. I, don't, I don't know how much I can give away. Yeah, there's fair, definitely, totally there's definitely dog men. We're looking at dog and, men here. Yes. And this is a fully animatronic mask, is that yes, right? Yes, it is. Uh, so there are several uh, motors in here. This was designed and built by Richard Landon, uh, who is a, an OG effects guy. He's Legendary. done everything. Yeah, Queen Alien, the T-Rex. So what we have is we have some uh, radios here. Oh, is this actually, powered up? Here we are powered up and ready to go. Eyes. Get the gym. And then, <gasps> Kevin, can I Ooh. hand one to you, sir? Oh. So everyone see what their functions are. Oh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh. Oh my God, I want him to just bite my, I want him to bite me. <laughs> so these are one of the challenges is that, and this is why, you know, rehearsal is so critical is that, you know, you're doing a function and we all have to right. make it look like it's a one brain creature instead of four brains. And then there's the performer inside as well. So eventually you get to a point where you just kind of riff off of one another and you just are able to create a performance. Fascinating. And there must be a, a lot of iteration before you get to that gelling of the performance yes. between the multiple... Oh, well, man. again, that's where, you know, the director, Nick Pollock, would come in and he would sit with us and we would try different things and he would look and be like, oh, can you make it do this? And then, you know, we'd work with him. So his input was very critical to getting uh, this performance out in his vision. I got to say, every time I make the eyes point at me, it gives me a little <laughs> bit of a sort of evolutionary chill. There is something to that. <laughs> I wonder what's in our DNA. Oh, man. So uh, how many masks uh, roughly are being constructed for this film? We have two. We have a hero, which is this one, which mm -hmm. is the fully function animatronic. And then there is a stunt mask, which has a poseable jaw, but it's soft. So for fight scenes or things like that, so you don't damage the actor or destroy the motors. Oh, that makes total sense. Oh, man, the dent, the acrylic on the gums is just insane. It's funny you point that out because this is one of the first uh, animatronic heads we actually 3D printed. Oh, so, so even the even the gums are 3D printed. Yeah, the teeth and, and the everything teeth is 3D well. printed. Yeah, all uh, as separate pieces in different colors. Uh, I think they printed them in different colors. Oh, Maybe not. Yeah. They may have painted right, it. Right. I, I might be wrong. They, but there are some pretty incredible things you can do now with that technology, and we're completely embracing it here. The translucency of the teeth is magnificent. Oh my God, the tongue! Oh, the tongue feels super soft. <laughs> <laughs> and there's tubes here that he can drool and stuff, so we'll hook all that stuff up. There'll be an inner mouth piece that goes in there that will sure. hide the actor's face. He'll be able to kind of see out. Oh, of look it. at that! He can totally see right out. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Was you already know the actor? So the yes. the head thing is built for a specific human being. Correct. His name is Robert Slavenberg. He is a seven foot tall performer. So when this character is on his stilts and he's he's going to be over eight feet tall, oh it's pretty gosh. impressive. Uh, how much? How much does his head weigh? I'm guessing you, the goal was to keep it lightweight. We try. Yeah, <laughs> Jim, what would you say? Five, ten pounds? I think it's pushing ten. Yeah, might be pushing ten. Copy that. All right. So, so I've clearly, I've got the eyes. They're labeled eyes, mm -hmm. and I can go back and forth and up and down. And there's actually some lovely subtlety I can get out of the closing of the eyes, depending on how I, on how I close them. That's really awesome. Um, all right, what do you have here? The jaws. Okay, and the jaw includes the lip curl. Oh, what a beautiful curl. Side to side. Oh, wow, a full trunnion sort of linkage down there. Oh, that's super cool. God, that's evolutionary. Just seeing that grimace is spooky. And I have the brows, and it looks like there's, you know, a multi-axis so we can look kind of surprised and then get angry. And there, again, there's just, it's about the subtleties. It's not just a, a single motion. I mean, to, to try and replicate nature, 
you know, there's all different types of subtle movements that, you know, you don't think about, but if it's not there, you're, you register it and that looks fake. Why? I don't know. It just looks fake. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's about uh, really trying to reproduce. Well, and I mean, I would assume that um, I'm also seeing that your brow affects my eyebrows yes. and uh, eyelids, and that's a really specific thing. So that was, you know, a lot of time you and I would spend, you know, coordinating our movements so he's not, you know, it's not affecting what's happening, you know, if, if my brow is doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Is this one of those things where everyone gets it perfect just before they're all done shooting? <laughs> Usually. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's so beautiful. Okay, we've got jaw, brows, eyes. What's the last one? Ears. Ears. Oh, let's, oh. Reactions. It's very important. It's got, it's got forward and backward oh. and up, and they also rotate. So in the lore, it's, it's it, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's their ears are always pointed up. Like oh, that's a lot of things that people point out that they see. So we definitely wanted to have that shot for the silhouette. Right, right. But also, you know, these are creepy creatures. They're using all their, uh, senses so yeah, we wanted yeah. to make the ears almost uh, their own characters to be very expressive uh, this seems to me what i'm looking at is pretty close to filming is are you guys getting are you filming soon we're getting there we're getting very <laughs> close we're, we're at the a home stretch there's some other characters we're still finishing like the juvenile and and some others that uh you have to go see the film if you want to see what they are <laughs> <laughs> copy that we'll yes. save some spoilers for the actual movie man that is so beautiful um, and you said almost all the parts inside the head are, are 3D printed, or is a it a mix of, of machined and 3D printed? There's some yeah. aluminum, uh, but for the most part, we've gone to a 3D printing yeah. as much as possible. It is so much fun to be part of like four people <laughs> moving it's... this thing around and then looking over and seeing this thing. It's, I can actually sort of get the, the taste of a feeling of what it'd be like to coordinate. Because that's also got to be like a great feeling. When you, you hit that shot or that get moment, that it's great. And, and the great thing too is that, you know, you can try different things. Like it gets to a point where the director can call something, you know, and it can say, well, do this and have him do this. And, and we can do it in real time. You know, we can, right. we can adjust the performances needed. There can be some discoveries, some happy accidents. Well, there's also, there's a huge amount of wonderful range on the eyes here where a blink is down to the lower left. Mm -hmm. Center is pretty neutral, mm -hmm. but then I get all this interesting mm -hmm. performance stuff at all the other axes of movement. That's really cool. And it would get eventually, it's, you know, like what I liken it to is playing a video game. When you, when you start a complex video game, you're like, oh wait, no, yeah, how does all this work? <laughs> and then eventually you're just, you're, you're not even thinking about it. You're just making it happen. It's very similar here. Yeah. Wow. Here we go. Now we're working on an unskinned, this is juvenile? Yes. Okay. But m almost all the same stuff is going on Very as similar. the other one. So you can see how some of those subtleties of movements can happen with the brows and the cheeks yeah. and things. So you know, they're all moving a little independently of one another. I'm curious about the process of realizing what you wanted in terms of activation, because there's a whole menu of what you can choose. There is. And you, and you do have to choose your battles as far as, you know, time, budget, and then room in the head for the motors. And so you, and, and, the, and script, the actor. The actor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that. But, but also the script is really the, the main uh, inf informative element to tell us what we need to do, what the juvenile does. There's a lot more action with this guy, whereas the female, it's it's a lot more about her pain. So that, so she's gonna have some slightly different uh, things, so. I got you. Um, does the nose wiggle up here? Is that what I'm I I'm pretty see? sure it does. I don't know who's, who's got it. Oh, it's, on, it's probably on a back slider. Oh. Uh, these back sliders right here, on the back of your radio, try and no. Oh, there it goes. Who got it? Who's got it? Oh man, All I right. can't believe I thought that was dental acrylic on the teeth. It's it's monolithic. It's a single printed. piece. That is so cool. Yeah, this. That's amazing. It. That also allows you to keep it a lot lighter in the aggregate, since you're not using fiberglass for all this. Oh, that very, means very light, right? yeah. that's it fabulous. Um, do you end up preferring a certain 3D printing process like uh, filament or nylon or resin? Yeah, everybody tends to gravitate toward nylon for the skull itself, yeah. this bigger part of the skull. These we've been printing in-house, or at least on most of them, uh, just out of onyx. Okay. On our, uh, yeah, on our printers in-house. Yeah. Oh, man. Is. I never get tired of looking at the inside of animatronics. Oh, look at that bend there. Oh. 
<laughs> Sorry, I've seen that all thread come out of <laughs> this one right here. It's beautiful. I just love the tongue. And there's like two motions in the tongue. Right, there's a base and a tongue curl. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I am really excited to see what you scamps get up to uh, in filming these in the wild. This is really, yeah. really thrilling. I appreciate you letting me take a deep dive and for operating. This is exactly as much fun as you think it might be. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you we have some excellent merch. We have a five pack of demerit badges for sale right now at tested slash store.com. We've got the I hung it off of level demerit badge, the I built the chair backwards demerit badge, the I hit my thumb with a hammer demerit badge. We've got the stapler in my finger demerit badge and my favorite, I stuck the duct tape to itself demerit badge. Get yours now, tested slash store dot store dash store, tested dash store, Tested. It's right here there. Just click that. <laughs>